Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context, the show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And I attempt to cling to every last morsel of hope I can muster. I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. Let's get started. Alright, Remington, we've done two episodes so far. How are you feeling? I'll be honest, first two episodes, not good animes, by my opinion. But I'm still hopeful, I'm holding out, I'm feeling good. This is going to be the one, Sean. This is going to be the one that I fall in love with. Well, I've got some good news for you, Remington. Oh. I have chosen a very specific anime. Okay. It's an anime that is beloved by critics and fanboys alike. Okay, that's a good sign. Albeit for different reasons, but it's unanimously agreed that this is a pretty good show. Okay, we're going somewhere. Um, uh, this is it. This is it. I have a right to be hopeful for once. Exactly. And there are, of course, plenty of problems with the show, as mm-hmm. it is with any form of media. But it's easy to look past those problems for a lot of different reasons. So I'm going to start with a good explanation of what we're about to get ourselves into. All right. Now, Remington, if you recall, in the first two uh, animes that I made you watch, there was a bit of love involved. Yes, it was very prominently themed in the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. And be honest, you weren't really, uh, you didn't really like the uh, love that was uh, presented to you, did you? I wasn't a huge fan. It was very shallow. And you'll recall, I in episode one, I laid out uh, a theory that wherever there are two characters in anime with matching sexual orientations, there will be sexual tension. That will be an undeniable fact. That's fair. That's fair. So you're saying you're feeling a little defeated for the lack of a proper romance. Is that what I'm getting at? Uh, yeah, I would like... I'm fine with there being romance, but I would like, if there is romance, for it to have some merit to it, to have some actual depth. Mm-hmm. So I actually went ahead and looked back at uh, our previous episodes and thought to myself... All right, let's take what Remington likes and put them into a proper character that he would definitely be able to fall in love with. Oh, my hopes are dangerously high right now. So I looked and I thought to myself, well, pink hair seems to be a pretty common attribute. (laughs) That's the thing, Sean. I'm sold already. Yeah, so I, of course, chose a show with a pink-haired female protagonist. Thank God for that. You know, a cute girl that you can really get yourself attached to, see yourself with in the future. It's been so long since we had one of those every episode. Yeah. And after all, Valentine's Day just happened, Remington. Of course. And I figured that since we're basically spending it together alone... (laughs) I should find the perfect waifu for you. Oh, oh God. (laughs) So, Remington, I'm about to show you a picture of the character I have in mind. Okay. Before you show me this picture, I want all of the listeners to know, Sean, the one thing he has told me before we have recorded this is that he thinks I will enjoy this anime. So as as you all gradually learn what it is, you all will have a better idea of if I will enjoy this or if he has been lying to me. All right, so let's see this picture. Would you look at that? Okay, so it, uh, the the picture that I'm seeing, it's of a very cute pink-haired girl uh, making a nice little heart with her hands. Uh, she seems happy, uh, simple, adorable, not overly sexualized, though that may change, hopefully not. But uh, it, it seems nice. It seems yeah. very wholesome. Yeah, I know she's got the little purple outfit. She's got, you know, her uh, pigtails with little ribbons on them. It's kind of cute, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me show you a little gift from the show. This is what she looks like in the show. Isn't that just... Yeah, all right, so you're showing me uh, a gif, uh, or or gif for those who prefer, of her laughing. Uh, Once again, very wholesome. Uh, Seems, this seems very nice. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I think this is just going to be a nice anime. Yeah. Uh, So, would you like to know her name? I would. Her name is Yuno Gasai. I'm going to forget that so quickly. Oh, don't worry. Once we really get into it, you'll remember it quite well, because how could you not? Look how cute she is. Of course. That being said, we've had a lot of cute pink-haired girls that have gone quickly awry. Don't worry. This will blow all of your expectations out of the water, I am sure. Okay. So, the show I'm going to be talking to you about is called Mirai Nikki. Pardon me? Mirai Nikki. Mmm. 
or the English translation. Yeah, give me that, because Lord knows I will not be able to pronounce uh, Mirainiki. Spot on. Hey, I, in that case, who needs the English translation? I speak fluent Japanese. Well, the English translation is known as the Future Diary. Future Diary, okay. Right? That's a pretty promising concept. Yeah. And it's a show about Yuno Gasai's love for the main male protagonist. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's it goes into a little bit of supernatural stuff. We're, we're entering the part of uh, part one where I become very suspicious. <laughs> Well, it's suspicious. There's no need to be suspicious. Just the nature of this podcast. I'm still hopeful, also suspicious. Yes. Well, you know, Gasai falls in love with the main character, Yukiteru Amano. All right, or... Yukiteru, it's time for you to show some personality. We haven't seen a man with some personality yet. I hope. Hope is the word of the episode. Hope is the thing with feathers. And I hope to God it won't get plucked. Well,. I'll be honest with you, he does have a personality. Oh, we were going somewhere. He's a bit of a whiny bitch. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> it's a personality, though. We've already had whiny bitch protagonists. But it, he has good reason for being a whiny bitch, for the most part. Uh, we'll see about that. Yeah. Um, so Yuki Teru, or Yuki, as he is known uh, by you know, mm-hmm. uh, has an imaginary friend. Yuki is a very social outcast, um, you know, kind of guy. He doesn't have any friends. He likes to think of himself as an observer, Uh right? He watches all the people, and he keeps note of what he watches just in a little diary. Okay. You know, it's very interesting. He has an imaginary friend that he talks to because he's desperately lonely and slightly deranged in a a little bit. As you do. Yeah. Talks to his imaginary friend, and uh, he named his imaginary friend uh, Deus Ex Machina. Okay, <laughs> that's is, is is this a joke uh, or is it actually named Deus Ex Machina? It is actually named Deus Ex Machina. I wonder what role that friend will play in the story. Mm, it's a very special role, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and push comes to shove, and it turns out his imaginary friend, who he thought was just that, an imaginary friend, is actually God. <laughs> That is the greatest twist of all time. <laughs> so I'm just imagining in this world, you have God and he's like, ah, oh, here's this lonely kid. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to convince him to think that he's making somebody up. But in reality, he's just becoming religious. That should be a strategy that Jesus employs where I just walk around and I'm like, I have an imaginary friend. His name is Jesus Christ. He's a super cool dude. And then eventually I'm like, oh, he's actually the son of God. You know, funnily enough, you already look a bit like Jesus, so I could buy that. See, it just works so perfectly. Yeah, but it's not quite like that. So turns out, oh, goodness, he's actually real. And he looks at his phone the next day afterwards. Like, he doesn't told that he's real at first. How, how does he find out? Uh, basically, he looks at his phone and realizes, huh, there's entries in my uh, diary for stuff that uh, hasn't happened yet. I would not come to the conclusion of God. I'll be honest. That would not be the oh, conclusion yeah. that I come to. I would oh. have just thought that somebody wrote in my diary That's fair. That's future fair. entries. Like, well, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. He doesn't okay, get revealed okay. as God until near the end of that first episode. Oh, okay, okay. But, which is a bit of a spoiler, but it's the first episode, people. Come on. Come on. It's bound to happen. Come on. Yeah. And he really uh, is kind of curious about this. He's like, did I accidentally write some entries or was I hacked or something? But then he realizes, oh, that just actually happened. Oh, that also just happened. Turns on the news. That just happened. Uh, That's a bit weird. Starts going through his day and realizes, oh, crap. My diary is predicting everything in the future, like, at 10 minute intervals. Okay, so he's become a, a 21st century prophet of sorts. Yeah, kind of thing. And of course, that's a bit of a curiosity. So he's, you know, using it to his advantage as we all would. Of course. You know, using it to get test answers, using it to, you know, avoid bullies. Can he choose thing. what gets written? Uh, no, it's just, it's literally just everything that's happened around him in the future. 
Well, you say everything. It can't be everything. It's pretty, it's pretty, like, just everything that happens around him specifically. Not, like, you can't, like, predict some far-off future. But, like, how detailed is it? Is it, like, you will kick a pebble approximately 3.2 meters across at 8 p.m. tomorrow? I suppose it'd be what you consider events that could, that, uh, provoke a mass, like, a consequential thought, or that could have an effect on the future. Okay, I won't be too much of a sickler on that point. I understand, I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm a man who is a big fan of unnecessary logistics. Right. However, uh, I understand that, obviously, those are unnecessary logistics, so even though I'm curious about how it would actually work, I understand that for the purposes of any type of reasonable plot, you cannot explain them completely. Yep. So, I think, I believe it's in, like, you know, five to ten minute incre- increments is uh, where entries are. Okay. So, he'll be, like, walking outside, and it'll say, oh, I'm getting jumped by bullies in ten minutes. Let's go this way instead. And then the future changes, so he doesn't get beaten up by bullies. Ooh, okay. okay. So, of course, he's using the future changing to his advantage. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, of course, that's pretty great. And, of course, in the background, you see Yuno Gasai. Yeah, this pink-haired protagonist that uh, is in love with him, and turns out she also has a, a little uh, future diary. As <laughs> it turns out everybody actually has a future diary. In fact, everyone knows the future at all times. In fact, it's not even the future. People are just recording what's happening, and they call it the future, and they just live in the present. That's it. Basically, sure. <laughs> Let's go with that. But all in all, you know, it's a very interesting thing. Meets up with Yuno, uh, she shows him her diary, and they're like, oh wow, that's really interesting, and they try and go on this little adventure to try and uh, figure out what's going on, and uh, the show goes about all their love and their really interesting and positive relationship. Hmm, I, I, don't, I don't know, There's, there seems to be uh, some uncertainty in your voice there, you don't seem super confident in what you have just declared, I think you're... Leaving something out. Uh, Leaving something out, Remington? Would I ever lie to you? You wouldn't lie, but you definitely lie by omission. I... I mean, look at you now. Isn't she just the cutest thing? She is, but that makes me suspicious. Is she... Another demon? Oh, I'm, I'm so suspicious already. Oh, no, no. What, so she, what, what is... She's human, but yeah, no, like, what could be wrong with her... You don't think there's anything wrong with her, do you? I mean, they're definitely... Oh, uh, she... I've seen... Sean, you've shown me two adorable pictures of her. There's something up. She's... Oh, wait a minute. I've cracked the case. His imaginary friend is God. Her imaginary friend is the devil. <laughs> That would be really interesting, friend. Oh, is that not it? I was genuinely no. so proud of myself. Oh. I was genuinely so proud of myself for that moment. I thought I had cracked the case. Hey, you could make your own anime like that. <laughs> but, uh, oh, okay, fine, I'll come clean. Uh, there is one slight thing. Uh, Remington, after we recorded last time, you weren't a big fan of all the happy-go-lucky stuff. Like you, Yeah, yeah you said just... you kind of wanted something a little darker yeah I'm a, I'm a fan of some some darker elements in my in my shows uh okay so i'm gonna show you the most iconic image of you know gasai okay okay one that more happens image. in the first episode and um, well just tell me what you think here we go okay um so let, let me briefly describe what i'm saying there's a nice uh, pink purple hue over everything. It's showing uh, the girl. You know Gasai. You know Gasai. It shows you know Gasai. And she seems to be in a demonic trance of sorts, perhaps in an evil world. It has a lot of dark undertones, but I'm not sure what's happening. You see the blush and the loose look that she's giving? What if I told you she was looking at Yuki right now? Uh, that's gonna really worry me, because I don't... I'm, I'm having Rosario Vampire flashbacks right now. Don't worry, don't worry, it's nothing like that. Okay, okay, thank God. So, remember how I told you Yuno has a diary of her own? Yeah. It's not the same as Yuki's, whereas his tells him everything that happens, like, that he can observe. Her 
Rogers tells her about everything that happens to Yuki in 10 minute intervals. Okay. So technically she's kind of a stalker. Ah, all right. Okay. And the real reason I picked this anime, not only that it was good, was it also features one of the most famous anime tropes of all time. All right, so time for me to do some learning. What's the trope? It's a character archetype known as a dere. Never heard that word in my life. All right. She is a specific type of dere known as a yandere. Even more confused than I was moments before. Okay. So some basic information. They're slang terms for the most part. Dere dere is the Japanese word or colloquialism for love struck or lovey dovey. Okay. So, you know, dere dere. Oh, she's so lovey dovey. Yeah. Right? And uh, so they chop off one of the dere's and they put a uh, prefix in front of it. In this case, yan, which is a chop off of the Japanese word for yanderu. Okay. Which means sick. Hmm. So basically she's love struck but sick because she's a yandere. Yeah. Now that doesn't sound too bad, does it? It still seems still seems okay, but less, but not terrible. The thing about yandere is, is it's a very specific archetype that it's usually described as a certain appearance on the outside but their true personality on the inside. Ah, uh, okay, so it's like on the outside, she's nice and cute, but on the inside, she's a psycho bitch. Yes. <laughs> uh, on the outside, she's this cute, really innocent, cheery girl who just is in love with uh, Yuki. But she's actually, like, plotting the murder of every girl who ever interacts with him. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's kind of along the lines of, oh, if something bad happens to Yuki, I'll know because of my diary, and I can go and kill whoever tries to hurt him. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, because yandere's are famous for killing the ones that uh, cause distress or harm or exist around their loved ones. I I didn't think that would actually be the route we're going with this. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. So she's a bit of a special case. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, this show's a lot darker than I uh, led you to believe. I thought I thought you know it was Valentine's Day. I thought I could get a nice little love story across to you. <laughs> I thought you might like it. So, uh, you, you know what? I'm still not dreading watching it yet. Okay. I'm still I haven't resigned myself that it's going to be awful. I think that I like so far everything seems like it's possible for me to enjoy still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now it's a very interesting concept. So, allow me to make some corrections to my previous uh description. Yeah. So, of course, you know, he's been playing with his diary a lot. He goes and uh, he notices that Yuno is kind of following him at a point, And he's like, okay, I'm going to go this way because she's just going to keep following me. Goes a completely different way that she couldn't possibly have known about. And then she's there because her diary tells her the future of Yuki himself. But why does her diary do that? Why? Well, because if you think about it, his diary was just him writing down everything he was seeing. Yeah. Hers is writing down everything that happens to Yuki Teru every 10 minutes. But why him? Because she's in love with him. But why wouldn't it happen? Why wouldn't her diary affect her? Well, it kind of does. But why wouldn't it be things that relate to her directly all the time? Why does it have to be him? Does it have to do with, like, the fact that he has a diary or a contact to God? I feel like there are a lot of questions that I have. That will be answered when you watch the show. Oh my god, that is a miracle. Right? I'll be honest, uh, as soon as I started asking those questions, I didn't think they were going to be answered. Just like in Sword Art Online, lots of questions, never answered. Yeah, well, you don't have to worry about that this time. Okay, yeah, so of course he's freaking out because, hey, she shouldn't be here, I better get out of here. Keeps, you know, trying to lose her. Uh, all the way to like in a to a construction site, a building construction site that's uh, you know inactive at the time. Mm-hmm. She corners him finally in an elevator. Oh jeez! And is like Yuki, uh, I have a future diary, and I'm here to save your life. Oh God! Because turns out Yuki uh, was being followed by a murderer. Basically, does the murderer have a future diary? He does. Oh my God! And of course, freaking out a little bit. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. At some point, I forget exactly which point, 
he goes and talks to Deus, you know, God, yeah. and is like, oh, I told you I was preparing a game, didn't I? This is the game. <laughs> I've given 12 of you oh. future diaries. Okay. And okay. the last person that lives gets my job. Oh my god. Oh, I'm intrigued. I'm into this plot. Oh, this... I said hope was going to be the word of the day, and it seems like it's actually going to happen. Finally, we may see an anime that I enjoy. I'll show everybody that I don't just hate everything. Uh, hopefully. I could still end up hating this. Yeah. But I'm hopeful. I'm still hopeful. Like, I'm excited. No show is without its faults, and this one has quite a few of them. But the overall story and the overall characters are great. Except for Yuki, because uh, <laughs> he's, you know, a bitch sandwich with that extra bitch sauce. Yeah. In in the tradition of our previous anime protagonists. Yeah, that's the usual case, but, you know. But, let's be real, we don't watch the show for Yuki. We watch it for Yuno, just to see what she's gonna do next. Alright, so, before we head into it, is there any last information you feel like I should know before we head on in to watching The Future Diary? Well, my friend, I'm going to put plant a seed in your head. Okay. Yandere sounds like a pretty scary thing, doesn't it? A little bit, yeah. A, l a little bit on the, uh, oh my god, I don't want this to happen to me kind of thing? Oh, yeah. Speaking from experience a little bit, Sean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've all dated someone who seems a bit like a Yandere. Yeah. It's a very popular fetish. Oh, wh what? Wait, on which end? Yandere's. On like, the yandere's... Like, like, a lot of guys like the, the idea of a yandere obsessing over them. No, that's not... No! No! So, while we're watching this, I like, want you to try and think, how is this attractive? Like, don't get me wrong. I don't want to kink shame if you're super into it. You can't control that. That's totally fine. But what? What? You don't like the idea of a uh, potentially murderous girl fawning over you? I suppose, you know what, okay, it's okay as a kink, so long as you recognize that it would be terribly unhealthy in romance. So, fine on the sexual front, terrible on the romantic front. That's gonna be uh, my verdict, though I, I suppose I'll, I'll have a more educated opinion on the other end. Alright, let's go watch some episodes of Mirai Nikki. <laughs> We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We have just finished watching the first five episodes of Mirai Nikki or The Future Diary, depending on your preference. So, Remington, I have to know, what do you think? Sean, the unprecedented, the unthinkable, and by some definitions, the impossible has occurred. You have fallen for Yuno Gasai. No, but... I did enjoy an anime. It was bound to happen. I finally enjoyed an anime. I sincerely had a fun time while watching The Future Diary. Oh my god. You actually like it? It was about goddamn time. I was worrying for the future of our program if you kept disliking everything I tried to show you. <laughs> yeah, we were on a bad course, but no, the shows that it is possible, I can enjoy things. I'm not just some anime curmudgeon trying to bah humbug the metaphorical Christmas of all things weeb. I can enjoy things and be happy. Oh, happy day. Santa has come at last. <laughs> All right, so let's let's delve right into it and discuss the future diary. Okay, so Remington, honestly, I have to ask, what were your thoughts after the first 30 seconds of the show? First 30 seconds? Now, the future diary, it doesn't hold anything back. First 30 seconds, it immediately goes super dark in both tone and content. And even despite everything you had told me in part one, it didn't quite prepare me to anticipate how dark it was going to go and how quickly it was going to get there. Oh yeah, no, it only took 20 seconds. Yeah, you just have somebody brutally murdered just right there. 
Don't you like how it just makes you ask, like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Like, this was such a nice change of pace from the overly happy, but still strangely weird and attempting to be dramatic. They went dark with it, and that that is my jam. Yeah? I am so glad that you like this one, because I was going to lose my faith in humanity if you didn't like this one. Because <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Remington, but Mirai Nikki or The Future Diary is probably one of the most popular animes of its genre which is a kind of a dark psychological thriller horror type thing and that is well deserved i was super impressed by just about everything there were a few things i, w I didn't like but overall i enjoyed most of it which is so good to hear you say and i think i have a good idea of what you didn't like uh because your oh, complaints yeah. are probably going to be the same as everybody else's complaints about it so, Remington, let's talk about some characters, shall we? All right, let's do it. All right, I'm going to save the most obvious one for last. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and that would be the protagonist, because yeah. we... we I could, definitely have some thoughts about him. We all do, and they're usually not positive. <laughs> so let's talk about the other uh, protagonist, as I like to refer to her, because she's kind of the most important character in the show, let's be honest now. Oh, yeah, she Let gets things done. When I told you that Yuno you know, was, you know, a yandere, and I told you what a yandere was, what were you expecting? You know, I was largely expecting a mirror of many of my previous exes, and that expectation was fulfilled. Just more murdery. Yet a little more murdery, you <laughs> yeah, might say. Yeah. She just. She, you know, happens to like murdering in her spare time, you know, whenever somebody, it's not when somebody crosses her, it's when somebody crosses Yuki, her boy toy, then she's gonna get ready to murder. Yeah, but isn't there something sweet about that unconditional love that she shows for Yuki? I don't think that I would go with sweet. That being said, I did find it entertaining and interesting to see how it would develop. How you just have this absolute psychopath in such an adorable frame. I love that juxtaposition, and I think they played it off very well. Like, you look at you, know, and you think, oh, cute pink-haired anime girl. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, yeah, and I believe it was in episode four or uh, in episode four where she threatens to murder somebody, but she's giving Yuki an option whether or not she's going to murder this other girl, basically. And she does it with such a happy smile as she's providing him this ultimatum of death. And that was just a great little moment. If I remember correctly, it was like, you can go with her and probably die, or you can come with me and live. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what what a way, what a romance there. Oh, yeah. But in the end, she does save Yuki's life yet again. And that is a common that's premise a, of this show. That, that's true. And I was, that happening was a bit meh, but I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, you don't really have a choice. The show has been out for ooh, quite a long time, about... Six or seven years now, I believe. It's basically ancient. <laughs> basically. Uh, speaking of uh, time periods and such, what do you think about some of the other diary holders? So far, all of the diary holders that we've seen through episode five, mm -hmm. I really like it. And I really like how the diaries come to be. Essentially, there are 12 people who have held diaries before, and however they utilized that diary before, it's going to be twisted into a future use of that variation uh, to what their future diary is going to be. And that creates some that are really useful and others... Uh, which definitely are not. <laughs> well, okay, let's talk about the diaries then. So, we obviously have the main character's diary, the indiscriminate diary. Yep. It's a diary that will tell him the future of basically anything that he observes. Pretty yeah. straightforward, super useful, because why would you care about anything that you're not observing? Yeah. And I still think that there's some questions that I would have it that came all the way back in part one of this podcast. Yeah. But I, as I said before, I'll accept that those questions won't be answered with this type of premise. I'm going to allow a couple of those. That's fair. All right. And then you have what you'd call the counterpart diary uh, to Yuki's, which is Yuno's. 
I forget the exact name for it, but she calls it a diary of love. Yeah, the, the future diary of love. I thought that was a really good way of explaining why it has everything to do with Yuki. Because in part one of the podcast, that was a big question that I had. Why is it about Yuki? Why isn't it about her? And the fact that she would just creepily stalk him and document him all the time. So her future diary is going to continue being all about him. It was, it's great. It wasn't all the time. It was only every 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. If I apologize. So there are nine minutes of every 10 where she is not directly writing down what is going on. Yeah. See, it's not that bad. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some of the uh, other ones, the other ones we've seen. We saw uh, briefly the third. He was the uh, random murderer. Yep. The random murderer, and he kept a murder diary. Mm -hmm. He's killed in the first episode, mm -hmm. so you can add some quick action, some quick intrigue. I thought that was a good pacing decision, uh, especially because it they went away from it being formulaic. It's not like they killed off a future diary holder every single episode. Yep. Sometimes they uh, might kill off one. Maybe you think they're going to kill off two. Sometimes they don't kill off any. And that way you're actually left wondering if anybody is going to die. Yep. Now, the main characters still have a lot of plot armor as to be expected. Yep. But nonetheless, the side characters who are built up in a quite interesting way, they don't have as much plot armor, and nor are their deaths necessarily predictable. And that's really nice. Don't you like how you kind of care about all these individual characters? Characters. Oh, it's so much better. I'm reminded just of uh, of our last episode on Sword Art Online, where it tried to introduce a bunch of different side characters, and all of them had potential, but it just dropped them off instead. Sword Art Online tried to do what Future Diary succeeded in. Right. Now, let's talk about more, some more specific, the more specific versions of these uh, characters. Let's talk about... The fourth. Let's start with the fourth. Uh, Caruso, the yep. detective, the man with the detective diary. What are your thoughts on him so far? He's a nice sort of, like, father figure. He's trying to stop all the deaths that are coming from this game, which is a noble cause. That being said, he, he may be the least interesting diary holder that we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. It's nice that we have a contrast in how noble he's, his intentions seem. That being said, he hasn't done a whole lot that is really interesting to me. So I like him, but he may be my least favorite diary holder that we've met. All right. Uh, let's talk about the 12th then. The 12th, <laughs> I think, is one of my personal favorites, no matter how short his time was. The, the 12th uh, was fantastic. Definitely took me by surprise. It was a, a tonal shift. Without a doubt, within the show. Yep. He starts out so somber, so serious, sort of... He's actually a kidnapper. And then he's actually this very flamboyant and not quite intelligent superhero thing. And it's so ridiculous and over the top. And I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. He was a man who believed in justice and may have watched a little too much um, Power Rangers would be our equivalent. Oh, yeah. And what was great is that his diary, he kept recording acts of justice, right? But they were acts of justice according to his own naive sense of justice that wasn't quite adept, which meant that his future diary would also have just a bunch of meaningless things like telling him to clean up trash in the corner or things like that, where it's clearly just not nearly as useful as the others. It can still come in handy, but it can also just be entirely irrelevant. Yeah. In fact, he used it to uh, figure out how to properly treat one of the other diary holders, one of my personal favorites, the ninth. I'm a big fan of the ninth. Yes. I, I was a big fan uh, of the ninth. Minene, I believe, was her name and how you said it. Yeah, Minene is uh, super great. She is the other super crazy bitch of the future diary world. And she has uh, so much sass. As you know, Sean, that's a quality I can appreciate in a character. And just everything she does is so over the top while at the same time being self-consistent within her character. Yeah. And 
honestly, she's a completely different type of crazy from you now. Oh, yeah. She's a very methodical type of crazy. She thinks everything through, and it's not that she cares too much. It's that she doesn't care at all. All. She is so selfish, so self-centered. She is just there to get what she wants, and that's it. Mm. What if I told you that the more you watch, the more you get to look into her motives? I am totally all for that. We were briefly introduced into her backstory and started fleshing her out. I'll be honest, the entire premise is that these 12, the winner becomes a god. I'm rooting for number nine, and I know that won't happen because she's not the main character. But, oh man, if I could choose a character to win the game right now, it would be number nine. That's pretty fair. All right, then I believe the only one left to talk about, aside from the big one, obviously, would be the sixth. Yeah, the the six. So she's the leader of this uh, strange old cult. Uh, do you remember her name? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just the six. Uh, yes, because the numbers are easy to remember after all. But uh, yeah. she is the leader of a cult that her parents set up, uh, hailing her as a clairvoyant. And then when they show her backstory, oh boy, that was intense. Yeah, you think? It, like, I would definitely encourage anybody to go and watch it if you're interested uh, before we really delve into it. Because, oh man, that was really major and just they threw it at you. Yeah, and a slight side note on that. If you do decide to watch this, please make sure you're of a proper age. Yeah, this is definitely not something that you want to bring your six-year-old nephew to come and watch. This has lots of mature themes all throughout it. Mm -hmm. It has uh, blood, gore, violence, and as well as some mature sexual themes interspersed throughout. Viewer discretion is advised. Yeah, if it, it wasn't kind of uh, tipped off to you by the first 30 seconds of the whole series. Uh, yeah. Like, that's You'll know given. very quickly. It's just what happens in the fourth and fifth episode that really kind of tilts the bar to saying, yeah, you really should have a pretty high uh, constitution for this kind of stuff. But man, oh man, her story is probably one of the hardest to really swallow as it's presented oh, to yeah. you. That being said, I think she's another one that I enjoyed her as a character, and I thought she was interesting, but she's probably going on the same level as Caruso, where I like her, but she didn't, she wasn't anything special for right. me. She had some really good moments, some really intriguing story, but overall, she wasn't exceptional in any way. Yeah. Like, if they had spent a little more time on her, it would have been great. Oh, yeah. But the time they did spend on her was phenomenal. Oh, yeah. It was definitely satisfactory. It explained her motives perfectly. We understood why she does what she does with a little bit of crazy thrown in. Oh, yeah. All, all the bitches be crazy in this anime. There is not a single girl who has had any modicum of sanity unless she is, like, drawn in the background. Unless she's a stick figure in the background, she's crazy. I don't know. That first girl in the first episode that got horribly murdered by the third... Oh, yeah, really, she, uh... seemed, she seemed really well composed right before she was killed. Yeah, you know, that's a reasonable reaction. All right, well, I think I think it's time to discuss the the elephant in the room, or rather, the Yuki in the room. Yes. Yuki is something special, isn't he? If by special you mean the blandest, whiniest piece of shit I have ever seen, he has no backbone. And not only is he not a character I like... I don't think I in really enjoy him on the screen a whole lot. He has some interesting moments that can really help drive the story along. But I found, especially when he has these long, drawn-out monologues, I just wanted him to stop talking because he was the least interesting part of the entire show. Yep, that is everybody's major criticism of the show. But you have to consider the fact that if Yuki wasn't as big of a coward and as big of a wuss as he was, that none of this would progress in the way that we've all found so enjoyable. And I think I'd be okay with him being a coward if he was just maybe a little bit smarter. That would be nice. If He doesn't need a backbone. He can still be a little baby all of the time. But if he could at least be aware of what's going on to 
any degree, and so if he could help plan stuff out, and then we could see an interesting dynamic where he's trying to, uh, he's trying to get, you know, to do all his dirty work for him because he's too scared to do it, but he's smart enough to understand that she's useful to him, and that's not what we got. Instead, unfortunately, we started to develop a sincere romance between them, and I don't, I, I don't like that not only as a viewer, but in the realms of the story itself, I don't think it was good for the story. Well, you don't have to worry about that because like I said at the beginning, I did not lie to you. This show is about their relationship. Yeah, the whole basic premise is of the survival game that they're playing, but it has so many threads extending out from that main survival game that it makes you keep asking questions and trying to think of what happens next. But one of those big threads is their romantic inclinations. And as the series progresses, you're going to see some ups, you're going to see some downs, you're going to see some things that'd be like, okay, Yuki, now's the time to call it quits and get away from the psycho uh, pink-haired lady. But of course, why would he? Because, you know, he's not that smart of a guy. And yeah, I suppose I just wish that he either tried to make her, tried to recognize that she was useful or tried to get away from her. They're going sort of right now, after episode 5, the path of least resistance with their relationship. Yep. And that's the least interesting option, in my opinion. And as the show does progress, I will say this, he does get a bit better. Like, he learns from his mistakes, he starts doing some planning himself. It'd be hard to get worse. It, exactly. So, like, now that you've had this kind of sour experience that is Yukiteru, you could move on and look for the positive things that he does. Which, there are quite a few in the show, because if not, then the show would be nowhere near as positively reviewed as it is. Yeah, so shall we discuss a few of the other elements about oh, the show? absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so Remington, one of my favorite things about this series has nothing to do with the story, and yet everything to do with the story. Oh yeah? I'm talking about the awesome intro oh, of this yeah. show. I loved the intro. The intro, it was so different from the others that we've seen so far because instead of just rehashing what we're about to see within the series, it had some foreshadowing elements, but the music was great. The visuals were stunning all throughout, filled with a bunch of different foreshadowing elements, but done in such a way that they can only make sense after you know them, as well as so beautiful with the colors and the contrast and all of the distortion with it. I loved the intro. And not to mention, it is a kick-ass soundtrack. Oh, without a doubt. Like, I would actually just put that on my MP3 player and just listen to it occasionally, just of how good it is. Yeah, I was, I was quite impressed. Another thing that I was impressed, and this surprised me, on the other end of things, at the end of every episode, there's this little skit done yes. by... A uh, little demon murmur. Yep. Right? And when it started, you had not prepared me for it. You did not mention that. And essentially, they try and make a little comedic skit at the end that's very silly, very jovial, very different than the show. Yeah, it's kind of to cut the... Uh the whole serious trauma that you just went through. When it started, I was totally prepared for it to be terrible. But from the five we saw, I think three of them I found genuinely humorous. One of them was a bit just man, and then one of them was bad. But I was very surprised to actually find those enjoyable because I thought that it was just going to be really bad padding for time, but it showed that they actually know how to get a little bit of humor, usually. Yeah, and they know that their show is so serious that they threw these at the end to give you a little bit of information about the characters and to kind of you know, help you de-stress a little bit, because watching, you know, a school building full of t kids being blown up can be a bit... Yeah, it's, it's a little bit on the stressful side of things, so yeah. it's nice to have a little laugh with a funny little demon girl. Yeah, exactly. And they are very hit or miss. Some of them are great, some of them are terrible. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a nice little touch. So, Remington, I want to talk to you about something that I mentioned briefly uh, near the end of part one. In all honesty... I don't think you want to talk about this. Oh, boy. I told you that ever since this show came out and similar shows to it, a popular fetish or kink 
is yandere. Yep, yandere. People will actually actively seek out yandere's to kind of portray that kind of uh, experience. So there's a bit of fear in that kind of thing. And it's a bit, you know, hard to swallow that that's a thing. And not to say that it's a bad thing, it's just a very strange thing to come of this. A show that seems to focus primarily on why this is such a bad situation for this guy to be in. What are your thoughts on the whole idea of Yandere being a popular, desirable thing? You know, I've, I've alluded to it uh, before already in this episode. I've had some girlfriends who I would definitely classify as Yandere's, and I, I probably overestimated the amount, but there was probably, from the top of my head, I can think of at least three of them who 100%, with no exaggeration, fall very firmly into this category. And needless to say... Those were very much failed relationships. Oh, really? For me, I understand in a very weird way the appeal because you get that validation of unrequited love as well as that element of crazy. It's fun. It's exciting. But it's also extremely stressful and dysfunctional. And I can definitely understand it much more in a sexual context. For, like, a one-night fling, I can totally understand having a, a very strong kink for Yandere's. But if you're looking for Yandere girlfriend, hopefully you are a better man than I. <laughs> so you're telling me that you know isn't your perfect waifu? Nope, nope. We're, I'll tell you what, Sean, maybe one day we'll find a, a perfect waifu for me. But we haven't done so yet, and we definitely haven't done so with you, no. Aw, I thought I was really close with this one. Oh, uh, she seems uh, like a, a cute, fun girl, but I don't even know if I'd want to be in the same tri-state area as her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that should about do it for us, but Remington, I've got to ask. Want to watch some more episodes with me? For the first time, Sean, I'm going to say yes. For the first time, I want to see where the story goes. I'm interested in watching more episodes. That is fantastic. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. If you guys would like to give us a suggestion, ask us a question. If you would like to tell us to watch more of this particular anime or any others, uh, particularly this one, I'd be very interested. Then you can send an email over on to animeoutofcontext at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much, and we will see you next time. Bye bye <laughs>